Every day we talk, we worry about a new variant. How many new variants have we identified and how much do we know about how you know more deadly if they are and whether the vaccines we have work against them? Yeah, you know, it's a complicated question because, you know, we have our main variants that everyone talks about, the UK, the South African, the Brazil variant. Um, we're seeing other viruses that are unre that that are unrelated to those, uh, acquiring some of the mutations that we think are important uh, for these new variant spreads. And so, and we're also seeing the, the, the variants accumulate a few more mutations. So right now it looks like there's five or six of these variants that I would say are, are of concern out there because they possess mutations that we know will either affect uh, transmission or would affect the ability of antibodies to bind to them. Now, the good news is some of the studies, uh, particularly from some of the more recent vaccines, have been looking at efficacy against these variants. And the, most of the vaccines continue to have some efficacy against the variants. Uh, it drops a little bit compared to the older strains, but the efficacy is still there. So I think the message when it comes to vaccines is if you're online, stay online. When you get called to get online, I would get online because these vaccines are going to provide protection and they're going to help reduce the spread of the older strains as well as the variants. Andrew, we also seem to be hearing that a number of companies or even countries are looking at a combination of their vaccine shots to see whether they're more effective. I think the latest news was Russia talking to China. Could it be the right way forward? Uh, absolutely. Um, it takes some clinical trials to make sure that you can go across these vaccine platforms as efficiently as some of the within platform uh, boost strategies are. Uh, but anything we can do to maximize the number of, uh, of vaccines that we could use together will help us move forward to that goal of getting as many people as possible with the highest level of vaccine pro of, of immune protection, because that's what we need to get into, into the human population. Andrew, the, the only question really that people want to know is how do we slow death and death rates and, of course, when might life return back to normal? We have a new vaccine tracker here at Bloomberg, and it tells me in 7.4 years at today's vaccine rates. But how much will the rates actually accelerate? Yeah. So this is the important thing about models. You know, models tell us where we might be going based on the data that we have right now. And Vaccine trackers are really important to, to help us understand what might be the best way to roll out vaccine and how the rollout will change. Uh, it, it's clear that the vaccine trackers will be changing their projections as we continue to increase our manufacturing capacity. And something as simple as even the J&J &J vaccine coming on the market could have a massive change in terms of uh, the timeline in which we could get to a protective level of immunity in the population.